Yeah. Can I lower it? Oh, no. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, no. Doesn't go. Yeah, but it's just uh, the affiliation, I mean. And the title, you see. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. So thanks to the organizer for inviting me to give this talk. And thanks for Johnny for the awesome presentation about what we have worked on together. So um, this will be based uh, on joint work, as you heard, uh, with uh, Gianni, Simon, uh, Francesco, and Jens, but also on uh, some ongoing project with uh, Adam Rennie, who is in Wollongong. And uh, as you can see from the title, uh, it's uh, about establishing uh, a relationship that I will make uh, precise between Kunzpimuser algebras and uh, exact mapping on exact sequences. Oh, no. Uh, so uh, this is the plan of my talk. You will see this slide uh, very often, because I put it a bit before any section. Uh, so I will start by motivation, but I think Gianni did already a very good job with that. And then I will describe a more general case of Pimsner algebras than the one presented by Gianni, which is uh, the case of Pimsner algebra for finite index by modules which somehow generalized the notion of uh, vector bundles instead of line bundles. Then I will describe the Giesin sequences. So, well, I will call them Giesin sequences. It has to be established if they're actually <laughs> Giesin sequences. And, uh, and then I will move to mapping cone exact, mapping cone, definition of mapping cones and the uh, arising exact sequences. Which I would like to compare these two objects, so the, the Giesin-like sequences uh, that Pimsner uh, described and the mapping connex like sequence. And uh, before doing that, I will describe briefly some connection with a uh, well-known theory that was developed by Richard uh, and Meyer about the uh, fact that KK is a triangulated category. And uh, then I will show you how one can explicitly compare uh, the exact sequences using uh, some uh, extension some lifting of the extension class. But uh, yeah, there are no formulas here, so maybe it's better if I show you something concrete. Because uh, yeah, so as Gianni said, we, the motivation for uh, deciding to study Giesin sequences is uh, that, they <laughs> that they appeared uh, in lots of uh, settings in mathematical physics, like in the study of T-duality and uh, chern simons field theories. So we decided to investigate those objects in the non-commutative framework. And um, the other motivation that I have is that um, if you play with these sequences and do com explicit computations, and especially this is what happened when we wrote our first paper with Simon, you realize that uh, there is some similarity of this exact sequence with the mapping on exact sequence. And so you of of the inclusion of the, your base space algebra into the total space of your bundle. So you want, we would wanted to investigate this uh, further. And uh, I happened to talk about this uh, to Adam uh, last year, and he was also wondering the same thing. So we ended up uh, doing this. So um, Johnny has uh, shown you uh, an instance of this uh, Giesin sequence in K-theory for um, the particular case of uh, circle bundles uh, that are associated to line bundles. And this sequence has a form of a cyclic, cyclic six-term exact sequence. So um, this map alpha is uh, the one that was described before. It's uh, the multiplication of, uh, with the Euler class of the line bundle. Uh, you can identify, um, so this is actually the sphere bundle associated to the line bundle, uh, which actually is the associated circle bundle. And uh, so this is the pullback of, uh, bundles, and uh, these two maps are uh, connecting homomorphism. As uh, we have seen in special cases where this, uh, two, this group goes to zero, one can actually use this uh, exact sequence to compute uh, K-theory groups. And um, this is the object that uh, we are interested in. So um, this actually admits uh, generalization. Yes, was discussing this two minutes ago. <laughs> that uh, this construction works actually for any sphere bundle, not only for a uh, circle bundle. So suppose you have a Normitian vector bundle over a locally compact uh, space X. 
using this emission structure, uh, the, the FiberWise inner product, you can actually define a series of bundles. So you can defi define the sphere bundle, which is uh, the bundle wh which has uh, spheres in the fiber. But you can also define the ball bundle, which is uh, the bundle that has these elements that have length uh, up to one. And um, of course, the sphere bundle is, uh, is closed in, uh, in the ball. And then we denote with this uh, difference, the actual difference, which is the open ball bundle. Now, um, we can uh, consider the relative K-theory group of the ball bundle with respect to the sphere bundle. And this uh, happens to fit into an exact sequence, a uh, six-term exact sequence that has this form. So uh, one has connecting homomorphisms and uh, yeah, the usual maps in, uh, in uh, the preserved degree. So, uh, but we can do more than this because we can uh, use uh, some um, explicit identifications to simplify this sequence. So first of all, we uh, <coughs> observe that uh, the ball is compact and the uh, sphere is uh, closed inside the ball. So in particular, uh, this relative uh, K-theory group agrees with the uh, K-theory of the difference. So, which um, will be interesting. So, uh, Moreover, the total space of the open ball bundle, which is this thing, is actually homeomorphic to the uh, base space. So when we actually do a second identification, we can identify actually the relative K-theory group with the K-theory of the base space. Finally, uh, the ball is homotopic to the base space. So we have a uh, sec uh, second identification, which is the identification between the K-theory of the ball bundle of the total space of the ball bundle with uh, that of the uh, base space. So we can identify subsequently these uh, spaces and uh, in particular the sequence will end up to have this form. So um, it will now involve the base space of the sphere bundle and the sphere bundle itself. So this is all worked out in uh, Karubi's book, so it's uh, not uh, n anything new, it's uh, something classical. But uh, the fact is that this map alpha that appears here, it's not working, no? Okay, it's not working anymore. You blocked me with your finger. Ah, you think so? Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so and the fact that, th that this map uh, that appears here, the map alpha, is uh, again a uh, multiplication with the Euler class of the bundle, which will now be the <coughs> Euler class of the vector bundle, no longer of a line bundle, so it will be a more complicated class, but it has exactly the same form of uh, what, uh, what I sh we've shown before, well, Gianni has shown before for the case of line bundle. So one first problem is to understand whether it's possible to construct a generalization of uh, this uh, exact sequence in the non-commutative case. And uh, in order to do so, we, we actually need to be able to look at uh, some concept that should generalize the concept of a vector bundle. OK, so move to the next session. Um, Yes, uh, yeah, uh, SMAB stands for self-Morita equivalence by module, which is nothing but a line bundle. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I write, I think that sometimes it's written in the extended way, but... Uh. Okay, so, uh, Gianni described very well what happens for line, that line bundles in non-commutative geometry are implemented at the sister <coughs> algebraic level by self-Morita equivalence by modules. And this is also true if you only work at the algebraic level, uh, so li algebraic line bundles are self-Morita equivalences. So, uh, the question is, what uh, could be a good generalization of vector bundle? So, um, well, uh, I will give a slightly um, more general definition, which is that of by Bersham by module. So, um, first of all, let me remark that in the literature there are all sorts of uh, names for these objects. So, people prefer uh, use the name correspondence by module, the by Bersham by module. Hilbert by module, and so here represent a convention that may not be the one you find in other texts. So this is the notion of by Hilbertian by module that is due to uh, Kajivara, Pinsari, and uh, Watatani. 
So they wrote a, a paper about a finite index by modules. And, and actually, it's about the Jones uh, index. And, and so the last A should be a B? Uh, sorry? The last A should be a B on your chain of inequalities. Mm. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's supposed to be a B. Yeah. Yeah, because at the beginning, of, yeah, okay, <laughs> it's a typo. That, uh, so later I will consider B e to be equal to A, so <laughs> that's why it appeared. So, okay, in the general case, you take a bimodule. Uh, Bilbertian bimodule is a Hilbert my module for the left structure, and that has a Hilbert my module structure on the left and on the right. And it has two inner products that are compatible in, a, in this way. So they are... They're such that the norms that are induced by those inner products are equivalent. So this is more general than the other compatibility condition that you can find, for example, in papers, uh, the paper by Brown, which is uh, the compatibility condition that also appears in the notion of uh, Morita equivalence. So if you have that compatibility condition, you fall into this uh, case, but not the other way around. So this is a bit more general than that. Uh, of course, when uh, B equals A, um, yeah, then here you have all A's, and uh, then we talk about Bayer-Bertram by module over A. So uh, Bayer-Bertram by module is in particular a special case of a C-star correspondence. So what is a C-star correspondence? It's um, E, which is a right Hilbert uh, A module, and with as in addiction and a left action of A by adjointable operators. So the notion of a C-star correspondence, there is no requirement about having um, a left inner product. So, and uh, the reason why I put both notions is that when you work with Pimsner algebras, what you actually do is that uh, you use all the correspondence. So you don't really use the by version by module notion. There is this other notion, which is uh, that of generalized cross product, and that uh, involves uh, by modules, but by modules that satisfy the stronger condition, not the one that I presented here. So in the literature, there's a bit of, uh, yeah, one has to go through it and understand what assumptions are made. And anyway, so this is a particular special case. Of course, if you have this uh, left uh, module structure, you also have some additional structure that will help uh, your computations. So um, we make some assumptions. So um, in this work, we don't make any assumptions about the algebra A being unital. And the reason for that will be uh, clear later, because we want to work with suspensions, and suspensions are not unital. So we start already with a non-unital case and see what we can do in that case. So uh, our assumptions will be that uh, E is countably generated. So this in particular tells us that it has a countable frame. So what's a frame? A frame is a, a collection of vectors uh, in the module that um, conver strictly converge, uh, well, that when we add up uh, their uh, rank one projection, these converge strictly to the identity on the module. So here I use the um, cat brown notation and not the theta notation that was uh, used by Gianni, but uh, this is exactly the same. Uh, Operator. So it's the rank one operator that takes the vectors and uh, projects it along the component EJ. So, and this is the definition of a finite index by a module. So this quantity here uh, is defined by, yeah, by it was defined in this paper by Watatani, and uh, uh, it's called the index. So in, um, in the case where the algebra A is non-unital, one requires that this thing takes values in the multiplier algebra of A. If this happens, one uh, says that uh, the module has a finite jones watatani index. If the algebra is unital, of course, uh, one will require that this uh, index takes values in the uh, algebra itself. And there is a very interesting characterization of this index, which is that uh, this quantity uh, is in uh, the multiplier algebra or in the algebra respectively, if and only if uh, our map uh, phi that defines the left module structure is not only adjointable, but it's actually compact. So um, why do we say that these uh, objects generalize vector bundles? Because uh, if uh, A is unital, 
a module of finite right index is nothing but a um, finitely generated projective module. And hence, uh, by the Serres 1 duality, this will represent uh, uh, the module of sections on some non commutative uh, vector bundle. So, this is uh, the analogy, we, the geometrical analogy we have in mind. Okay. So, now I will. Um, describe a Pimsner's construction in this uh, more general framework. So um, in the description that Gianni gave, uh, um, the module had the special property of being a self morita equivalence, which in particular implies that its dual is also a self morita equivalence. And this is a, so when one takes uh, the interior tensor pro uh, product, one can also take an interior tensor product of the negative powers, so of the dual module. And one gets a decomposition of, um, yeah, one gets a Fock module that has two sides. So it has positive uh, powers and negative powers. In the more general case where the, we are only dealing with an injective correspondence, this is uh, no longer true. So we have to co change a little bit our construction. So, um, so we have E that we will now look at as a, Correspondence. We assume that it's injective, and uh, yeah, we will also assume that it's full if I didn't do it before. And uh, we consider the interior tensor product of E with itself uh, over with the left action. So um, then we define the, the module of, uh, yeah, say, degree lab label n to be the nth tensor power of the module with itself. While for in degree zero, we consider the, yeah, white speed A. Sorry, um, yeah, A was equal to B, so, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is the base, uh, what I call the base space, so it's uh, the scalars. So then we can, uh, all of these are Hilbert, Hilbert modules, and in particular we can consider the direct sum of Hilbert modules, and we define uh, the direct sum uh, to be the Fock module. Now, uh, on this module, we, ca we still have uh, creation and annihilation operators uh, as before, but uh, here the situation is no longer symmetric because there is a, a big kernel of the annihilation operator, which, is, uh, <coughs> uh, which consists of the s algebra of scalars. So as before, the creation uh, annihilation operator associated to the vector psi simply multiplies uh, in the first entry the vector. And uh, while the dual, uh, op sorry, the joint operator um, consists, uh, yeah, there shouldn't be a tensor here, of course, because it's, sorry, it's sloppy. Yeah. So because this inner product takes values in A, so we can multiply with uh, eta 1. Eta two and um, yeah, so we define the triplets algebra of the associated to the bimodule to be the sister algebra uh, represented inside the algebra of uh, jointable um, endomorphism, which is generated uh, by those uh, operators. So uh, why is it called the triplets algebra? Because it's a mm, generalization of the construction of uh, the triplets uh, algebra of the yeah the classical triplets algebra. So. And uh, likewise, uh, this algebra also has an, uh, fits into an extension by compacts. So it's really, the, analog it's, the analogy is pretty clear. So, um, yeah, we will define uh, the Pimser algebra of the correspondence E to be the quotient algebra that appears in uh, this exact sequence. So you see it's really the analog of the triplets extension. Here you have the compact operators. Uh, in the middle, you have the triplets algebra, and then you have the OE. And of course, the notation OE is a reminiscent of uh, the construction of uh, the Kunz algebra, which also fit in such an extension. So, some people call this algebra, as I did in the title, actually Kunz beams are algebra because they generalize the uh, ON algebras. So, uh, we make some further assumptions. So, we assume that uh, the algebra of scalars is uh, separable and nuclear. So, in particular, um, there are some results that tell us that uh, the Toeplitz algebra and the Pimsner algebra will also be separable and nuclear. And in particular, since we will have an extension by uh, nuclear algebra, uh, we will also have a completely positive splitting. And this we need because we want this ex extension to give us 
um, six term exact sequences. Sorry, completely trigger question. So, what is your E to get the usual F6 extension? Uh, C, uh, I think CC. Yeah. yeah. E is just a complex number. Complex, complex number. number, yeah. So, the base is a complex yeah. number, and mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, About, uh, then you can get, uh, in order to get the Kuntz algebra, so you need to take uh, Cn. And then you can also get the kuntz krieger algebras uh, by taking vectors that satisfy certain compatibility conditions that reflect uh, the ones and the zeros that appear in the matrix. So, and yeah, as a further example, since we're talking about examples, uh, there are of course cross products by the integers. They also fit into an extension of this form. There is a triplets like algebra, and yeah, so. But of course, this is more, this generalizes this construction because you can uh, get graph algebras in this framework, and you can also get a cross product by, um, and yeah, the natural, so and, and, and <laughs> yeah, so, and it's a bit more general, which is the power of this construction. Okay, so as Johnny described, very well before, uh, we have a U1 structure here, <laughs> because, uh, and this is, yeah, this is the only appearance of the term gauge in my <laughs> talk, <laughs> which is this uh, action that is known as the gauge action, so it's simply defined in terms, oh, sorry, um, simply defined in terms of this uh, ends that, uh, up, uh, that define this grading in the Fock module. So using these elements, we can, this, um, this uh, representation, we can define an action on the Pimser algebra, and uh, we can look at the fixed point algebra for this action. So um, in particular, since we have this uh, U1 action, we also have a conditional expectation that is given by evaluating over the action. But as you can see, there's a conditional expectation. We all will only take values into this fixed point algebra, which is in general different from the algebra of scalars. There is also this proposition, which is uh, probably fol folklore, but yeah, we put it in, I think we will put it in the paper as a remark. So um, this uh, algebra of, uh, this fixed point algebra is ac agrees with the algebra of scalars if and only if the module you are starting from is actually a self morit equivalence. So, um, and this explains why when you construct this exact sequence for the self morit equivalence uh, by module case, you have this uh, explicit representative of uh, the connecting homomorphism. Because you actually can, you can look at O, E as a bimodule over, uh, as an OEA bimodule by using this uh, conditional expectation. And this will no longer be true in, uh, in the general case, so we need to find a way out that people in this room found, I think, yeah. Some, and also Adam and, uh, yeah. Okay. So what happens at the level of uh, exact sequencing in theory, um, KK theory? So the defining extension, which I can probably po point back to again, but I think you know which one I'm talking to. So it's the one, the compacts, the triplets, and uh, Pimser. Um, indu we'll induce six term exact sequence in um, KK theory, but we want to make them look uh, better. So we want to get rid of uh, the compacts, and we want to get rid of, uh, yeah, of, uh, yeah, mo mostly of, yeah, of uh, the triplets algebra. Mm -hmm. So we want to have something that only involves the scalars and the uh, Pimser algebra. And so we have some ingredients that we will use. So the first one is the class of the correspondence because uh, I mean, we have this correspondence and uh, we assume, we know that this correspondence under our assumptions goes into the compacts. So it will define a class in KKAA. Uh, but we also have this, um, <coughs> Uh, Fock module, which is uh, naturally as a Morita equivalence between the compacts on the Fock module and uh, the algebra of scalars. And then, uh, this is what was actually proven by Pimsner in his paper, there is a KK equivalence between the triplets algebra and the uh, algebra of uh, scalars. And uh, this is the inverse of the class of the inclusion of the scalars into the triplets algebra. So this class is satisfied this condition where J is, yeah. Uh, yeah, 
J is the inc inclusion of the compact. Sorry. Yeah, it's probably in the sequence. So J is the inclusion of the compacts into the Toeplitz algebra. And they satisfy these um, compatibility conditions with the Kasparov product. So if we use this compatibility condition, then the exact sequence will simplify a lot. Was the uh, is a k, k equivalence between the Toeplitz algebra and the uh, algebra of scalars, and it's the inver so what actually we yeah so uh, what the uh, Pimser proved is that uh, the inclusion is a k k equivalence and beta is uh, we denote by beta the no no it's okay uh, maybe I went too fast beta is the inverse of this k k equivalence. So if we use this uh, compatibility condition, we can um, put. Uh, everything into six term exact sequences in KK will uh, also, like Gianni, will also show K theory and K homology. <coughs> so uh, as you see, again, we have, uh, now we have something that resembles a lot what we have uh, classically. So for the Giesing sequence, so we have the, the algebra, the <coughs> coefficient algebra, and then we have the Pimser algebra. And uh, in the middle, we have this uh, Kasparov product with, uh, the cla with uh, one, minus the class of the module E. And then J star will be, yeah, the dual of uh, what we had before, which was the pullback. And then we have a connecting uh, homomorphism. And this connecting homomorphism is the class of the product of the uh, extension class. So the class of the Teplitz extension that I showed you with the class of the Morita equivalence, because here we have uh, done uh, some identifications. And that's it. So these are the two six-term exact sequence that uh, Pimser constructed in his uh, paper and uh, that we want to study. So let me mm, make some uh, remark about this connecting homomorphism that uh, appears in the six-term exact sequence. As I already said before. So. Um, if we are dealing with the self morita equivalence, the conditional expectation, uh, which takes values in fixed point algebra, will actually take uh, value in the algebra of scalars. So uh, we, we can define uh, a valued inner product on the um, elements of the Pimser algebra. And then if we denote the completion of uh, this uh, module with respect to this inner product, we actually get uh, a new module that I will the note that I denoted with um, capital Xi eta, thanks to Magnus Goffin for <laughs> the notation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, then so if we are in the self morita equivalence by modules, so that is, uh, there is a general uh, generator of the circle action, uh, which is nothing but the number operator that uh, also appears in quantum mechanics. So we have a Fox space and we have this number operator. So it's really the analogy with the harmonic oscillator is, uh, <laughs> is striking. And uh, if we take the number operator and this module, what we get is that uh, this class, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, there should be a one. I'm terrible. Um, yeah, so there's a one there. Uh, the class of this uh, module, seen as an OEA module, with that uh, operator is a uh, is in KK1 OEA, and this, and if we take the Kasparov product with this class, we actually have the connecting homomorphism that appeared in the exact sequence. So this is what happens for self morita equivalence. But um, we don't, well, we don't know. We will know soon that uh, if we want to deal with something that is not a self morita equivalence, we, things become a little bit more intricate because we don't have this conditional expectation. So um, summing up so far, um, we have found these Giesing sequences in K-theory K homology uh, that can be interpreted as a, a non-commutative version of the classical ones. And in those sequences, the multiplication of, uh, with the Euler class is replaced with the multiplication of um, this class that actually looks like the Euler class, which is 1 minus uh, the class of the uh, bimodule. Okay, so now I'll make a brief detour to um, mapping cones. So
So, um, okay, this is a sentence is a bit ambiguous. So, when we um, wrote our paper with Simon, we constructed this uh, Giesing sequence for uh, quantum lens, space, lens spaces from scratch by mimicking the classical one and by using some uh, things we knew about the K-theory of the uh, projective space. In particular, uh, we knew that there were a certain class of projection and a certain class of fragile modules, and so we used all these ingredients to assemble a sequence. But uh, when it came to proving that this, uh, we had a sequence, we, we didn't know whether it was exact or not because we had a collection of maps. So our strategy to prove that this sequence was exact was to compare it to another sequence that we knew was exact. And this sequence was um, the mapping on exact sequence associated to the inclusion of uh, the scalars into the total space, so to say. So um, let me just recall some basic definitions. So suppose you have an algebra A, uh, you can define the cone of this algebra as a collection of uh, functions that uh, from the, yeah, uh, closed and, well, so the interval open on the right uh, that take value zero in zero. So this is a sister algebra with pointwise uh, operations and uh, the norm is uh, the supremum norm. And um, then you, if you have a morphism between two sister algebras, you can define the mapping cone of this morphism that uh, I denoted with this notation for, uh, because I found it handy, but uh, of course there are other notations like uh, C of F if you want to stress uh, that you're uh, doing it with respect to that particular morphism. And uh, this is defined um, as a subalgebra of the direct sum of the algebra with the cone with the condition that in one uh, you actually get uh, the value of the morphism applied to that element. So in particular, if we will look at an inclusion, then it will be functions of this form with the condition that F1 belongs to A. So uh, why is a mapping cone important? Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it play, it's everywhere in algebraic topology, I would say so. No, and it, of course, if it's in a very nice extension of sister algebras that uh, involves also the suspension and, um, and the, uh, of the second algebra and the algebra itself. In particular, you have, well, natural maps are the projection into the first factor and then uh, the inclusion of the suspension of B into the mapping cone. So this exact sequence actually admits a completely positive uh, cross-section, which is given by this formula. So in particular, it induces uh, six-term exact sequences in uh, KK theory. So let's look at what happens for the inclusion that we want to study. Um, well, we have a, this is the corresponding uh, six term, uh, sorry, this is the corresponding extension of sister algebras and the induced um, exact sequence uh, will be, for K theory, will be this one. So now what uh, we would like to do is uh, to compare these exact sequences after using the appropriate uh, identifications uh, that involve both periodicity to the one we had before. So, um, in order to do so, we use both periodicity and we define this map, J star B, which is given by the composition of the um, push forward with the bot map. And now we can uh, compare the two exact sequences and put them into this diagram. So, yeah. Um, here in the bottom, you have the, well, it's just a piece of the sequence. Um, here in the bottom, on the bottom, you have the exact sequence for uh, PIMSAR algebras, and on the top, you have uh, the exact sequence for the mapping cone. So, yeah, now I'll make a brief uh, detour into the world of uh, extensions and <laughs> triangulated categories. Okay, so why else are mapping cones important? Well, uh, in 86, there was this uh, paper by Kunz and Skandalis about uh, exact sequences in KK theory. And they realized the following uh, fact. So if you have a semi-split extension of sister algebras, then uh, this ideal is actually equivalent to the mapping cone of the projection morphism. And why is this relevant? It is relevant because it gives you a recipe for constructing the connecting homomorphism in uh, KK theory. So the idea is that, uh, um, yeah, if we define by U the class of this KK equivalence, 
and then uh, we consider the natural inclusion of the suspension into the mapping cone, then up to both periodicity, our, uh, the connecting homomorphism will be represented by this class. So you still, you still need to identify this KKSQJ with KK1QJ, but up to using both periodicity, uh, there's a KK equivalence between the ideal and the mapping cone gives you what you need for uh, defining the connecting homomorphism. And this is the first step, but there is more to that because this only tells you that uh, if you have this exact sequence, you can look at the mapping on exact sequence and this gives you the ingredients you need for your KK uh, exact sequence. But uh, this was later generalized, uh, well, also motivated for, by the bound cone conjecture by Meyer and Nest. So what they proved is that the KK category is a triangulated category and um, the exact triangles in uh, this category are um, mapping cone triangles, meaning that every Tri exact triangle is isomorphic in a notion that I will tell you now um, with a um, triangle of an uh, of a, with a certain mapping cone triangle and in particular the mapping cone triangle is the one that I showed you before so if we apply this to the particular case of uh, our extension what we get is that we have this uh, commuting diagram of uh, triangles and uh, the vertical arrows are, well, in two of the vertical arrows here are, uh, well, one actually because it's a triangle, are uh, identity. And then here we have, uh, no, well, th here it's also an identity, sorry. And yeah, so what we have is that the vertical arrows are uh, KK equivalences. So this, uh, the idea of uh, having an exact triangle in the triangulated category is uh, a uh, triangle that can be put in a diagram with a mapping cone triangle in such a way that the diagram commutes and the vertical arrows are uh, KK equivalences. So that's the definition. And uh, in particular, for every uh, semi split extension, the natural <coughs> triangle, mapping cone triangle that implements this uh, isomorphism is the mapping cone triangle for the projection. So what we're trying to do here is slightly different because we're not really looking at this mapping cone, but we're looking at another mapping cone. But um, in our case, uh, we have that uh, Teplitz algebra and uh, algebra of scalars are actually KK equivalent. So um, uh, there is an axiom in the triangulated categories that says that if uh, three out of four maps uh, in this uh, picture are, um, so, uh, sorry, if the, two things. So first, if the diagram commutes, but you have a missing map, you can always find a map that makes uh, the diagram commute also there. But uh, furthermore, if uh, three out of four of these maps are isomorphism, the fourth will also be an isomorphism. So what we get is that we actually have this KK equivalence between these two mapping cones. So the mapping cones of the projection and the mapping cone of the, of the uh, inclusion. Yeah, this I said in words. So this follows from axiom of triangulated category. So if we combine these uh, two equivalence of triangles, we actually get an equivalence between the, the triangle of the defining extension and the triangle of the mapping cone uh, for the inclusions. So this in particular tells us that uh, if we construct uh, induced uh, exact sequences in KK theory, we will get commuting diagrams. So um, let me remark that uh, this missing map uh, that we, yeah, so maybe I should go back to this diagram that I had before. Uh, I made lots of pointers, not for the one I'm actually needing. So um, here we have this map that we lab labeled with a question mark because it's what we want to put here. And uh, well, we actually have a candidate for that. And it will be this class. So it's a threefold Kasparov product with, uh, which involves the, the Morita equivalence, and then it involves the U, which is the KK equivalence I was talking about before, the one of Kunz Skandalis, so the KK equivalence between the mapping cone and, um, uh, and the ideal. And then we have also the inclusion of mapping cones, which we also know to be a KK equivalence because we showed it before. 
So um, if we use this uh, class, this will make diagrams commute. You can check it explicitly, and it's very easily. It uh, easily easy. It involves the um, identity of KK classes uh, that Pimsner uh, constructed. So if you use this class, this works. But what we, we No, but if you use this, so if you write down this class and then you try to put it in the diagram you have before you, yeah, yeah. So, um, but what we wanted to do was actually a, use a different approach. So we really wanted to use an explicit representative for this map that makes the diagrams commute. And this you don't get from this formula. So um, in order to do so, uh, we decided to use a strategy that is uh, present in a paper by Matt Muscoff and Ram Messon and Adam Rennie, about where they construct an unbounded representative for the class uh, of the connecting homomorphism that appears in the Kunz, uh, Pimsner exact sequence. So as I said before, the problem was defining this uh, conditional expectation. And this uh, they overcome, I won't give the detail, uh, they construct a positive A bilinear expectation on the Pimsner algebra, and it, it's actually something that takes value in the algebra of uh, scalars and not in the fixed point algebra. So once you have this map, you can define an A valued inner product in the obvious way, and then if you do not the completion uh, of uh, OE in, uh, in, this, uh, in, the nor in the induced norm, you get a uh, bimodule. Now, um, this bimodule has a very nice decomposition into modules that are of finite index. So, and uh, we can uh, consider the projections onto these uh, modules. And uh, in particular, if we sum over all those projections that have uh, equal indices, we get an operator Q, which um, will give us a bounded representative for the extension class. In particular, uh, this operator Q has a, has a range that is isometrically isomorphic to the Fock module. So um, it's this is very similar to the things that happens in the self-Morita equivalence case, where, um, yeah, I will first describe this. So if you have a self-Morita equivalence by module, you have naturally this conditional expectation. And you, but you also have a two-sided Fock, um, you have this two-sided Fock module structure. So you define uh, an operator which uh, only projects onto the positive part of the Fock module. And, um, and then an unbounded representative for this uh, class will be given by the class of the number operator that I described before. So it's uh, really, their construction really agrees with the uh, construction uh, of uh, this extension class in the case of self morita equivalences. Okay, and then you also need, uh, of course, uh, to give a form uh, for the operator, and uh, you define this operator using a suitable uh, function that uh, I won't describe here, but in some sense it measures uh, how far you are from the fixed point algebra when you are in one of these uh, components of the module. And um, turns out that this uh, module actually, this uh, operator actually does the trick and what you get is an unbounded representative uh, for the bounded uh, module that I described before. So what uh, we did uh, with Adam it was uh, generalizing uh, this uh, result that they had uh, to the case where uh, the mm, algebra you start from is no longer unital. And uh, even though um, you may think that you, there are problems concerning the finite uh, projectivity, it actually, everything is still works. So you still get uh, the composition into finite mo modules of finite index, but in the sense of uh, Watatani. So you are not no longer have a finitely generated projective modules, but your in Jones Watatani index of the components is still uh, finite. So. The um, nice feature of this operator is that uh, the spectrum is, uh, can be chosen in such a way that it coincides with integers and uh, such that the eigenspaces are these uh, modules that I described before. So um, since this module has discrete spectrum, 
and uh, one can show that it also commutes with the left action, uh, you, we have this uh, condition. So if we pull back the inclusion, we, have, uh, we, get, uh, we get zero. This in particular tells you that you can lift this module that before was only a module defined uh, in KK1 uh, OEA to a um, class that now lives in uh, KK of the mapping on A and that satisfies this condition. So this is uh, pretty much similar to what happens in the um, paper by... Um, but also, uh, did you also work on this? No. Yeah. So it was a uh, subsequent... Yeah, this is Carrie Phillips Rennie. So they, it's a paper called Mapping um, yeah, uh, Tia Singer Index Theorem in Non-Commutative Geometry or something. Yeah, I don't remember ex uh, exactly the title. Uh, Non-Commutative APS, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, and uh, so there they construct this um, explicit unbounded representative for the lift of uh, uh, your class to the mapping cone of the inclusion. So this is what we need because it, it's a class that does uh, that uh, sits in the right K, K theory group, and uh, we, what we did was uh, proving that this actual this class actually makes diagrams commute. So the commutativity of uh, this um, left side diagram was actually already in this uh, paper, so we don't need to check anything. In order to deal with the other side of the diagram, uh, we use the characterization of the K-theory group uh, of, uh, of the K-0 group of uh, the mapping cone that was given by Putnam in, in, the pa in this paper. And, uh, and we use uh, the explicit characterization of this K-theory group to compute uh, this uh, product explicitly when applied to elements of uh, the mapping cone. So our strategy was to use this characterization together with uh, a result that is uh, also in the paper of Kerry Phillips Arani, and we found that this product is actually given by an index. So we computed the index and we realized that it was actually equal to the map uh, F star. So this uh, works very easily for i equal to zero, and for i equal to one, we adapted the argument to the case of suspended uh, algebra. So that's why we added to work with uh, non-unital algebras. Okay. So why does it work? It works because if you have a by bergen by module of a finite right one tiny index and you consider uh, the suspended by module over the suspended algebra, this uh, turns out to also have a finite index and the finite index is uh, given by this formula. So what, what you would actually would expect. Moreover, uh, if this module is full, so is also the uh, suspended module. And uh, if the action is injective, so it's also the action of the suspension. There is a little subtlety because in um, the paper of um, <coughs> um, yeah, uh, Goffing, uh, Messler, and Reni, they had to put, uh, in order to construct their representative for the extension class, they put two uh, technical assumptions on the module. And what we checked was that uh, this module, the suspended module, also satisfies these assumptions. So everything uh, will work uh, readily. So then you can combine these things all together. So we have a by version uh, by module of finite index uh, with uh, injective full and with injective action. And uh, we assume that it satisfies these assumptions uh, that I didn't dwell upon. So um, then the, we can lift the unbounded representative of the extension to a class that uh, lives in the, this uh, KK group of the mapping cone and of the algebra. And uh, by taking the Kasparov product with this class, so we get a map that, makes, uh, that um, is an isomorphism and makes diagrams commute. So the, there are some, moreover, if um, the algebra b happens to be in the bootstrap class, this uh, map also is a KK equivalent. So this works partly, but uh, there are still some uh, open problems. So, um, <coughs> yeah, uh, what we get is that uh, our map that we constructed in this way makes diagrams in K-theory commute, but we don't know anything about whether this map does the job for KK theory. 
And uh, yeah, this is still an open problem and we have uh, not been able to, to prove this. So we know that in the bootstrap class, this is also KK equivalence, but this doesn't tell us that it makes KK diagrams commute. So this is some, some, something we need to work on. But um, yeah, just to sum up, um, uh, I described how to construct beams and algebras for uh, finite index by modules and uh, and uh, I also described uh, how to make this uh, a relationship between this uh, uh, six-term exact sequence uh, from Pimser construction with the six-term exact sequence for the mapping cone of the inclusion. And uh, part of the novelty here also involves uh, that we were able to deal with the non-unital case because uh, that's what we needed to work with the uh, suspensions. So yeah, there are still some open problems also because I mean that have to do with the fact that unfortunately when you have um, in a triangulated category, you don't know whether a map that makes the diagrams commute is unique. So this still needs to be checked, but yeah, so far that's where we are now. Thank you. I haven't worked it out. I mean, I want to, one of the examples that we would like to study as a, yeah, commutative, non-commutative example is a case of sections of a vector bundle, but we have not done it yet, so. I saw a hand. Yeah, I, I have to ask, well, you say that there's now the for finite index. I'm yeah. Italian, it's not, I don't know, well, actually, is a, there should be a question mark there, because yeah, I... I think it's a very big question mark. Yeah. Because the, I mean, the exact sequence you have in the Pimps now, you only see one minus the, yeah. the yeah, that's class true. of... Yeah, you're right. Of the vector bundle, right? But if yeah. it's a true Gisson sequence... Yeah, you, you should get this extent... Yeah. So yeah, you should see more... Yeah. Yeah, I just circled on. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I was wondering about that because, of course, that when you write the Euler class in the classical case, you have all these extra powers that. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. No, you have this. Yeah, it's a if the line is uh, greater than 1 in the extra terms, 1 minus e minus Yeah, you have to take the extra serial powers. So since in things that we have only 1 minus e, so it cannot be well, the same class, right? It's a theory class. So it's, it's, yeah, but it's not the same KK theory class. Yes, it's a normal theory class. But it's just 1 minus the vector function. There has to be the exterior powers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. There might be something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, but this thing came to my mind. Uh,